In this video, we're going to teach you the low bar back squat and break it down from the beginning. Please note that while we're recommending certain positions, everyone's body is unique, so there will be some variation on an individual basis. We'll begin without the bar to establish proper mechanics without load. Take a stance with your heels shoulder width apart and your toes turned out about 30 to 45 degrees. Look down at your feet and take a mental picture of what your stance looks like. Remember it. You'll take this stance every time you squat. Bring your hands up to the prayer position in front of your chest and flare your elbows out to the side. Keeping your elbows flared out and your feet flat on the floor, squat down. Put your elbows on the inside of your thighs and shove your knees out with your elbows. Remember this. Your knees should be shoved out such that your thighs are in line with the angle of your feet. Flatten your back and look down on the ground about two to five feet in front of you. Don't look up. Don't look down with your head up. Your head should be in line with your spine and your eyes down on the ground slightly in front of you. Then stand up using your hips. We're going to repeat this whole process again viewing from the side. Take a stance with your heels shoulder width apart and your toes turned out about 30 to 45 degrees. We took a mental picture of this before. It should look the same. Bring your hands up to the prayer position and squat down keeping your feet flat on the floor. Flatten your back as much as possible, shove your knees out. Flexibility varies across individuals, so for some, it may be more difficult to achieve a perfectly flat back than others without a loaded barbell. That's okay, just do the best you can. Let's review the bottom of the squat. At the bottom, your thighs and feet should be in line with each other, your back should be in slight extension, your torso should be angled more towards horizontal than vertical, with your eye gaze being perpendicular to your spine. This puts your focal point on the floor somewhere between two and five feet in front of you. Your hip crease should be just below the top of your kneecap and your weight should be balanced over the middle of your foot. If you feel like your heels are coming up or you're tipped forward, your weight is forward of the midfoot. If you feel like your toes are coming up or you're going to fall back, your weight is behind the midfoot. You should not feel your weight on the front or the back of your foot when you are balanced properly. It's essential to achieve appropriate depth in the squat in order to utilize the most muscle possible while reducing your injury risk exposure. Proper depth is indicated by the hip crease coming just below the top of the kneecap. When you're too low, your back will round, your hamstrings relax, and your knees slide forward. This predisposes you to hip, knee, and low back injuries. And because of the tension loss in the hamstrings when going too low, you've lost essential strengthening in this muscle. Likewise, when you're too high, you're also predisposing yourself to knee and hip injuries, as well as eliminating an important portion of the range of motion. This means you won't get as strong as possible. So make sure to achieve appropriate depth, which is indicated by your hip crease coming just below the top of your kneecap and not going too low or being too high. It's also important to maintain your spine in slight extension throughout the squat and particularly in the bottom of the squat, which is a common place people tend to lose tightness, round their back, or get butt wink. As you approach the bottom of the squat, focus on keeping your back extended by trying to make wrinkles on the back of your shirt. Now that we've discussed the bottom position, we need to discuss how to stand up. In the low bar back squat, you'll be driving the motion up with your hips. However, this is not to be confused with a good morning or mistiming your hips and shoulders. Your hips should not rise before your chest and you should not lift your chest up too soon. Instead, maintain your back angle and move your hips and shoulders out of the bottom of the squat in sync with each other. Now we're going to take a peek at a couple of different people in the bottom position. You'll notice that everyone looks different from one another, but they're all applying the same mechanics we just discussed. Depending on the shape and size of your body segments, as well as your flexibility and athletic ability, you might learn this quickly or take a little more time. That's okay, move at your own pace and make sure to nail this before adding weight. Do two to three sets of five reps and then we'll move on to squatting the bar. The low bar back squat gets its name from the placement of the bar on the back. In the low bar back squat, the bar is placed just below the lateral aspect of the spine of the scapula. So if you take your right hand and reach over your left shoulder, you'll feel a bony ridge. This is the spine of your scapula. The spine of the scapula angles in and down and a common mistake with the low bar back squat is to place the bar too low. So make sure you're putting it just below the lateral aspect or the bony ridge on the end. Before you get under the bar, you'll wanna make sure the bar is set to the appropriate height, such that when the bar is on your back, 
Just below the spine of the scapula, you stand up and clear the bar off the hooks. So you'll set the bar height in line with the middle of your sternum. Now let's get under the bar. A good place to start is by taking a medium grip with your ring finger or middle finger on the power score. If there are two scores on the bar, the power score will be the innermost score. You'll use a thumbless grip and make sure the bar is set across the bottom of your palm and not up by your fingers. Then dive straight under the bar and wiggle your way into the right position with the bar just under the spine of the scapula. Bring your feet under your shoulders. Lift your elbows, squeeze your shoulder blades together and press the bar into your shoulders. Stand straight up, wait a moment, then take two steps back into your squat stance that we discussed before. Now you're gonna squat. Two things are different now that you have the bar on your back. One, your elbows aren't shoving your knees out at the bottom, your brain is. And two, you won't be stopping at the bottom. You'll simply be squatting down and standing right back up. So take a big breath in, hold it, squat down without dropping your elbows, stand all the way back up, lock your knees and hips, and then exhale. Take a big breath in, hold it and repeat until you've done five reps. Now let's look at some different people squatting. You'll notice various grip widths and wrist positions because everyone has varying degrees of flexibility in their shoulders. That's okay. Over the course of a few weeks doing the low bar squat, your shoulder flexibility will improve. So even if you feel uncomfortable on day one, stick with it for a few weeks to allow your shoulders time to adapt. Let's review all this from the side. Using a thumbless grip, grab the bar and make sure it's set across the bottom of your palm. Then dive straight under the bar and wiggle your way into the right position with the bar just under the spine of the scapula. Bring your feet under your shoulders. Keeping your elbows up, shoulder blades squeezed together and the bar pressed into your shoulders, stand straight up, wait a moment, and then take two steps back into your squat stance that we discussed before. Take a big breath in, hold it, squat down without dropping your elbows, bounce and stand all the way back up, locking your knees and hips, and then exhale. A common mistake people make is not bringing their feet under the bar and doing a back extension or good morning to take the bar out of the rack. With weight on the bar, this can cause an injury. So make sure to bring your feet directly under the bar and your shoulders. You might also find that you're having some trouble getting your wrists in neutral. If this is the case, then relax your grip around the bar, go a little wider and try to grip over the bar. Lastly, when you are done with your set, walk straight in until the bar hits the rack. Then lower the bar onto the pins. Don't fish for the pins or hooks. You might miss one and hurt yourself. That's it. For a proper squat workout, you'll do one to two sets of five reps with the squat stretch discussed at the beginning of this video. You'll then do two sets of five reps with the empty bar, then take evenly spaced jumps up to your working set while tapering the reps. We've linked a barbell training warm-up app below that we highly recommend in order to appropriately warm up to your working weight.